Greetings, it's Hogdog. Hey, uh, today we're going to show you how to do ATC in multiplayer for the Microsoft Flight Simulator X application. Uh, we are currently in Atlanta, uh, which is the airport that I chose to do ATC out of. There's nobody here. There might be one person here. But um, at any rate, you'll notice the first thing you'll notice when you uh, uh, come into ATC is that it's paused. Uh, just like it is in an aircraft when you come in to FSX. So you unpause yourself and you, you notice as, uh, as you look around you're, you're actually in the tower and you can look around with your hat switch or your track IR or whatever, whatever you have. First thing I'd like to do is set up my screens and I do that by holding shift and pressing 1 through 6. So shift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I, I then resize my radar so that it is this large. Oops, I have a hard time grabbing that sucker. There we go. I don't go any farther than that because I need this information on the right. Although I do cover up this, um, this is actually not going to be there as I start to do ATC. One of the things you can do with the panel options here is you can fade out the... Uh, screen so that you can see aircraft through your radar as you look around. Not really all that handy. It can become very confusing. Uh, your screen can get really cluttered. So I like to leave mine faded in. Other than that, all these, the rest of these buttons just bring up the stuff that you're looking at here. Information, communications, radar, session, and the actual radar screen. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And the first thing you'll notice, uh, we won't talk about the radar yet. We'll talk about that as we, well, we'll start with the information over here in the corner. Uh, this is ATIS information showing you wind direction, uh, speed, uh, local time, and altimeter. Information you need to give to uh, inbound and outbound pilots. Secondly, there's communications. There's COM1 and COM2. Uh, you can transmit and receive on both. Uh, you cannot transmit and receive, or you cannot transmit on both at the same time, but you can receive on both. So you can hear comms 1 and 2. If you wanted to switch over to COM 2, you just click transmit, and you'll notice that the transmit on COM 1 turns off. Uh, that can come in handy when you're doing tower because, let's say I was set to 126.9. Uh, again, you can... You, uh, you, you would cho choose the frequency based on what, wh what you're doing at the airport. If you're doing approach, uh, you can select one of these uh, predetermined, pre-selected uh, frequencies for Atlanta approach. You can also do clearance, pre-taxi. You, know, you, you actually have several people running a tower at, at, one, at one airport. So, and everybody can be on a separate frequency. I'm going to set mine to the tower frequency of 119.0 and if you, uh, it changes COM1 and notice it does not change COM2. I have COM2 set to 118.75 which is the default frequency that you get when you come into FSX and then that way I can switch over transmit on, on 118.75 and I can say hey uh, come on over to 119.1 uh, for tower and then switch back. Um, again, you can look through this entire list of frequencies for KTAL, or you can set it manually if you wanted to. You could say, I want my frequency to be 135.1, or 2, or 7, whatever. But as soon as you select one of these, it's going to change it to that frequency. Okay, so the radar settings. Uh, this is... Uh, really important. This is, uh, you want to make sure that you get your radar set up so that you can view things properly. Uh, the first thing I like to do if I'm running approach is zoom out a little, maybe two notches. Uh, I like to turn on my compass rows, and you do that by pressing the COMP, and that adds a compass on the outside. It helps me guide pilots, tell them which direction to fly. Uh, I set my rings. You notice you can set your rings to be off at 2 miles, at 5 miles, 
at 10 miles and at 20 miles. And what that does is that helps you identify how far somebody is away from the airport. For example, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that this ring has a four mile, it tells you that's four miles from the airport, six miles from the airport. And this particular airport is eight miles out. This one, if you follow the ring, is 16 miles out. So it helps you to identify how far somebody is away from the airport. I like to leave mine on 10 miles. And 10 miles is a good number because it's, it's easy to do the math, for one thing. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mile, 50 miles out. Halfway between is 45. You know, so I like to leave mine at 10. You can turn on the train. I would not recommend it because you notice how bright it becomes. Uh, when pilots are in here and there's a bunch of them, uh, it, it can become very hard to see with the train on. So I like to turn, leave mine off. I like to leave my airspace on. Um, that uh, tells me when people are entering my area and when I need to talk to them. Uh, I also like to leave, of course, the airports on. Without the airports, there's really not much... Uh, purpose in being tower so I like to leave those on but again if you click it again you're going to get uh, all of the labels uh, for uh, all of the airports and that can become pretty uh, cumbersome on your on your desktop so I like to just leave airports on with no names VOR uh, that's the same kind of thing you already they're already turned on by default uh, but you'll notice if I if I click them again the little name comes up DOB VOR PDK, VOR, um, I like to leave those off too, but no, you know, normally there's not too many of those, so it's not a bad idea to leave your VOR uh, labels on. Uh, I, I like to remove my low level airways. Uh, this will actually clear up the screen, the screen quite a bit. All them blue lines that you see, um, we can add names to them, or I can remove them, and I like to remove them. Uh, I'm not going to guide people to their low-level airway, uh, although I could uh, if, I, if I so choose. High-level airways work the same way, but they're off by default, and that's for larger jets, uh, higher altitudes, uh, and those are actual jetways. The uh, low-level are airways, um, just kind of a direction to go. Anyway, I'm going to turn uh, high airways off. You'll notice that the ILS button is on by default, which is kind of cool, because what it does is it shows you the ILS direction for each airport, and it makes it easy for you to line somebody up with this dotted line. Uh, I like to leave those on. NDB is for military uh, navigation. I leave that off. We don't, they don't use NDB in commercialized uh, navigation anymore. Um, these fixed uh, points, you notice all these little, as, as I press it, all these little white dots that appeared all over the place? Well, those are intersections. Uh, if I press it again, the intersection names come up, and there's quite a bit. So you can see, you know, that can get quite confusing. Um, I wouldn't turn those on unless I was zoomed in, you know, and, and I was only doing, say, approach or um, departure. Uh, and then I might... Oops. Then I might move over and say I know that the airport is uh, the airport is uh, active as runway nine. So then I just move my my whole screen over so I can see the intersections that that I'd be guiding you to or from or whatever. You can oh you can center. Uh, this, these little arrows allow you to move the screen around, but then. And when you press the center button, it, it brings you back to your airport. I'm going to turn off the fixed runways. Down below that is the session information. Uh, if there was anybody in the session, uh, their name and tail number, a location, altitude, all that information would be listed here. Now, I can select them from here, and they would be highlighted on the screen. Kind of cool. Okay, so back to uh, my normal view. Uh, that would be my normal view if I was running tower. Now if I press A, you'll notice that I go to 
uh, up here in the corner, session one. Session one through, I believe, four uh, shows you different views out the airport window. It takes you back to the cockpit and the virtual cockpit. The virtual cockpit's used for just looking around or walking around. Uh, what I like, one thing I like to do with my stations one through four is I like to zoom them all the way out so I got a better view. Because I really don't need to use the computer uh, that's sitting in front of each, each uh, station, although I could, because they do change based on whatever's going on in the airport. But I can also press Shift 1, for example, and bring up my radar at any station. Now that radar won't stay as I cycle around through the different views, come back to 4, you'll notice that the radar is gone. Hey, looks like we got somebody coming into our airport. I can't speak to them right now because I don't have voice enabled in the in the room, and he's not in my team speak. But oops, let's go back and oops, take a look at the radar. When I was saying you can see somebody, um, you can see the people who are in your session, in your session information. It shows his uh, tail number, his type and how far out he is. You can see, he, it looks to me like he is taxiing down the runway, or down the taxiway. You can verify that by going to your outside view. Oh, one of the uh, best views in the game, or in uh, Tower, is if you go to the outside and you press A, you get a top-down view. Uh, it can come in very handy for guiding people through the airport. If you run ground, this is the way you would do it. You would look at the ground uh, and then press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You might even fade in a little, uh, fade it out a little bit so you can see through. At any rate, um, that's the general idea. If you uh, have any questions, I can be found and seen at and talked to at... Um, msflights.net uh if you um, I, well hey thanks for watching